Oh, you got my phone. Why would you do that? And welcome back to another reptile video. Here is a handful of baby pythons. <laughs> so these little guys here, come here, come here, come here, are Australian Darwin carpet pythons. So the orange ones are albino and the commonly browny colored ones are just your regular sort of Darwin carpet. So they will totally change as they get bigger. So obviously little babies, they haven't even had their first shed. They're probably about three days old out of the eggs. So they sort of, yeah, after they've sort of hatched out of the egg, they take probably about a week or so to do their first shed and then we get them eating. But how cool are they? very friendly little snakes they will get quite big if you haven't seen my best snakes for beginner video i think it was that top four or so about a year or so ago uh, these guys are mentioned in there because they're a bigger snake super docile very cool and if you want something a little bit bigger than a children's or a spotted ah you're going everywhere snakes i'm gonna drop you there's a lot of snakes there <laughs> come here come here Anyway, these are Darwin carpet pythons, so I will jump to another type and then we'll go through the basic care of them and all that sort of stuff. How cool are they? Let's go do some different pythons. So I didn't think this one through very well. We have a lot of <laughs> jungle pythons in that tub. Here is a jungle python here. Almost about to shed, that's why it's got that really dull colour and slightly dull little eyes to them but this is a zebra jungle carpet python so they call it a zebra because they've got the fine doesn't even look like a zebra i suppose well it kind of does if you squint really fine pattern did you just yawn at me you did hello but see how his eyes are hazy he's going to have his first shed so i probably should have filmed this in a couple of days time when they look a pretty color because these will go black and gold like the dad on the screen there so you wouldn't think they look the same as that when they're babies because they're that matty sort of brownie color but it's just more of a camouflage thing when they're babies so that is a zebra and here is a handful of normal <laughs> i was going to pick one up but they all kind of jumped on my hand at the same time aren't they cool so these are jungle carpet pythons they will go black and yellow with age as i said yeah most snakes like this won't sort of show any color until they've had a few different sheds and they look probably their ideal at about a year old how cool are they there's a huge variation in pattern and stuff like that how many have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of you. So pretty big for a baby snake. So that is out of the egg size. I don't even know how big you are. How big are you guys? Yeah, they're not going to tell me because they're snakes. But those are baby jungle carpet pythons. So I have quite a few of these guys available as well. If you see any snakes you're interested in in this video, once they're eating, um, yeah, just contact me on sort of private message or anything like that on any of the social media sites. Um, I don't sell snakes, obviously, in the shop or reptiles. These are all private and you'll need a Queensland reptile license or wherever you are in Australia before you actually can keep one. Look at them. It's like Medusa. You little babies. So quite a few of these guys. Obviously, I'm not going to handle all of them at once because they're just going to go everywhere. <laughs> a lot of misinformation about jungle pythons. They can be very, very nippy, but any snake will technically get used to you over time and it's not going to act like a terrified wild snake or anything like that. They're more interested in you and exploring and sniffing and doing all their sort of snaky type things. But those are jungle carpet pythons when they hatch. Let's jump to another type of snake. And how pretty are these guys? So these guys have already had their first shed. So they're a few days older than the last lot of jungle pythons you just saw. And these are spotted pythons. So very, very cool little snakes. Look at their little beady eyes, look at their little tongues. So yeah, spotted pythons are pretty nice little snakes. As I said, pretty nice, yeah, they're pretty nice little snakes. <laughs> um, yeah, spotted pythons will get around that three to four foot long. Uh, it's like a children's python, just a different locality, but they've got that really nice striking sort of pattern to them. So I think there's some really pretty ones in there. If we have to dig deep to see the pretty patterns, well, they're all kind of pretty, but look at that one. Yeah, look at that one in the middle of the screen. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, spotted pythons, these guys are going to be split into their tubs now, and I'll go through all that with you as well. But very, very cool little snakes. Nice and easy to keep. They retail for about $150 in most places. Um, I sell them for around about the same price, and they're cool. But yeah, if you would like any of these snakes in this video, just yeah, contact me on social media. How cool are they? But that is spotted pythons. So we're going to jump to some different ones again. And the next lot are children's pythons. So these are ghost children's pythons, which is just a different morph, I suppose you could say. Uh, the ghost bit means they just sort of lose a little bit of colour at night, because apparently that's what ghosts do. Hey Benji. Benji is not interested in snakes. So these guys are just about to shed, that's why they've got that sort of mingy grey to them. So they're a couple of days younger than the spotted pythons we just saw. But these guys also don't get very big compared to a spotted python. So max out around that 50, 60 centimetres, maybe 70 if you're lucky. Um, but yeah, relatively small snakes, very easy to keep as a first snake, obviously. Um, called children's pythons because of the guy that discovered them, not that they eat children or <laughs> anything weird like that, or are for children. But non-venomous, every snake in this video is non-venomous. They're Australian pythons. Lovely little things. Oh no, they're waking up. Don't drop. When you hold snakes, you really don't want to hold them above the ground just in case they drop because they're babies. So we're going to put these guys away, go into their tubs and go through the basics of all that stuff, aren't we? Yes, we are, because all of a sudden they're like, we're in the sun. Why are we in the sun? We're nocturnal. Okay, back to the shade we go. Why, hello there. We are now on the floor in my reptile room. Yes, it's a room full of reptiles. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you thought I only keep fish, think again. So those are most of the baby snakes in this giant rack tower thing here. And here are the rest of the baby snakes. So I've got them in cricket containers like this one here. They're actually perfect for little baby snakes, just as they're going to get fed. Well, get them feeding and all that, and then you can upsize to an enclosure and all that. So I'll show you some sort of six-month-old yearlings in enclosures just after this little bit here, so don't panic. I don't actually keep snakes in tubs, hence giant walls of glass enclosures everywhere. Tubs for baby snakes are perfect because they can't get out of the tubs. Baby snakes got a habit of sliding, getting through the sliding glass doors and enclosures, up little tiny holes and all that sort of stuff. For the first sort of six months, ideally, you want something very small for the baby snakes. I'm going to try and open this with one hand. There we go. So this is just, did you bite me? Okay, this is a bitey children's python. Really? You bit me twice. Three times. Okay, four times. It's just going to continuously bite. That is a marbled children's python who's throwing himself around. Look, getting ready for bite. Are you going to bite? You did bite. Baby snakes don't really hurt when they bite. <laughs> that is defense bite, not food bite. He's freaking out, the poor little guy, because he's not used to being held. So this snake is about, what, four weeks old or so? So... I only had one feed. Unfortunately, all the marble children's biofins, and there they are on screen at the moment, have pre-sold. I only had one clutch of them. This is the first year breeding them, but next year I will have some more. They're pretty cool little snakes. Um, oh, yes, let me show you one of the adults on the screen. How nice is that? So this adult here is currently in shed, which means it goes a really, really cool blue color. If only they stayed that color. How nice is that? So snakes will shed depending on how fast they grow, usually every couple of months or so for the bigger ones. For little snakes, they can shed every month and a half. If they're shedding any quicker than every sort of month or so, it's probably got something to do with stress or there's something not right with the snake. So if your snake's continuously shedding, maybe go to a vet, but it's normal for a growing snake to shed. Uh, so that snake on the screen is obviously a not a baby snake, but they still grow throughout their lives. They just slow down a fair bit. And back to this snake who keeps biting me. Really? Probably doesn't like my voice. <laughs> or my thumb. Or moving or anything like that. Yeah, stop that. So we're going to put this little guy back because he's getting very upset with us. In you go. Basic little tub set up. This is extremely basic. It has water. It, I'm sorry, could be a boy, could be a girl. 
the snake has water and trying to strike at me. It's a baby. And usually you would have a little hide, like a little tiny box or something, because they're only in these tubs to get them feeding and then they go into the bigger tubs like that. They will hide under the aspen snake bedding. Of course, I've just put all these in, so none of them are hiding under the aspen snake bedding. <laughs> but trust me, they will go underneath and then they'll be perfectly safe. So as long as they can get away from the light, obviously there's no lights on these tubs as well. Heating, it's pretty simple. It is a heat cord. So what I will do is I'll show you a couple of tubs with heat cords in them. So all these tubs, and that's another thing with baby snakes, make sure the lid is fully on, otherwise you will lose your baby snake. So, oh, I'm getting old. That's the noise of my yeah, standing up. Ugh. That is a heat cord. So these are tubs of baby snakes. Ignore the labels. I haven't taken the labels off. But these tubs here, that is one of the baby jungles you saw before. Hello, baby jungle. You've got fluff on you. So these haven't shed yet. So they have the heat at the back, the water at the front, and then they can thermal regulate by going back and forth. So the way we're gonna heat these tubs up is they're gonna be on a little shelf. There's gonna be a heat cord underneath, and these tubs actually have little legs underneath. Not that you can actually see the little legs, but there's a little gap so you can just run the cord under there. So when the snake gets a little bit bigger, there's the frogs. If you haven't seen the frog video, go check that out. So when the snakes get a little bit bigger, they can go into enclosures like this one here. So this is an exoterra enclosure. Awesome enclosures. I like them. You can stack them so you can have layers of snakes. So this is a spotted python. It's about a year old. Uh, this is a basic cage setup. So after about six months or so of keeping your snake in a tub. Oh, why are you freaking out? I probably should feed you. Okay, we're going to feed you while we're talking about you. That's much, much better. So in this sort of enclosure, you've got obviously a place for him to hide, which is that hide right there. You've got your water bowl. You've got somewhere for him to climb and all that. So spotted pythons like this one will still quite climb quite well. So sticks, branches, all that sort of stuff. Plastic plants are just for decoration, so you can go as crazy as you want to go. They don't like big open areas, so you can pack it full of wonderful stuff if you want. But that is the basic sort of setup of a baby snake enclosure. As they get bigger, you just continue to go to bigger enclosures, like that type of thing. And you can set it up any way you want, so you can go branches and all that. There's a snake up there. Um, yeah, as long as you've got a water bowl, you've got a hide somewhere, you've got branches for them to climb, and you've got heat. So, as I said, this has got like the heat like that, which is the heat cord, so warm spot, cold spot. You can use lights and stuff like that one up there, that is a heat lamp, so snake goes up there, heats itself up, goes back down there, nice and chill. Apart from that, I think that's probably the basics of baby snakes in tubs. I could keep going on and on and on about baby snakes. I won't. Uh, I will show you the olives though. Yeah, look, there's a lot of snakes. They are evil as at the moment. <laughs> so these are the baby olives from last year. What I should do is find my hook. Oh, really? Oh, you got my phone. Why would you do that? And now your little jaws bent. You got my thumb. <laughs> Here is a snake hook. So we actually have been fed today, but we are cranky. So if someone wants some cranky olive pythons, I still have a few available from last year. I'm not too sure how big they are. Um, whoops. But they are big enough to get an upsize. Oh my goodness. To get an upsize. Yes, to get a bigger enclosure. Look at your jaw. I'm just gonna grab you. Come here, come here. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna put you on the ground like that. Don't, don't strike. Really? That was far too close to my knee. So that's a baby olive python. You got my thumb. <laughs> oh, come here, come here. Settle. Will you settle? Or won't you? That is ridiculous. You're going back. Anyway, 
We have some super angry olive pythons available if you would like one. Stop it. Really? Oh my goodness. In. In. They don't hurt that much when they bite you. Really? <laughs> As he goes for my face. Oh my goodness. Okay. Come on. In. In. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, maybe we don't go. How's this for exciting snake stuff? Oh, come on. Watch your snout. If you don't want big bitey snakes, <laughs> um, stick to these guys, which are super cool. Oh, I should show you an albino olive python. No, wait, that was a olive python. An albino Darwin carpet python, so you know what they look like when they're bigger. Let's jump to that. So that is an albino Darwin carpet python. I did try and hold him while I was filming. It really didn't work. <sighs> but we have... Mr. Darwin Carpet Python. I'm tickling you, I'm tickling you, I'm tickling you. They will get bigger than this. He's maybe only about six foot, seven foot or so. Uh, about eight foot or so for a Darwin Carpet Python. You come here, you come here. A little bit more chill than a baby olive. <laughs> But that is an albino Darwin carpet python. So with albinos, their eyesight can get damaged very, very easily by um, UV radiation. So you don't really want to keep them outside in the sun or anything like that. Just make sure he doesn't knock over any of my tubs. See, baby snake was terrified of me. Doesn't care that there was a giant snake just crawling around the tub. So those little ones in those tubs there will end up like him in about maybe three or four years. Just make sure that it doesn't go anywhere too far. No, I'm going to touch you again. I'm sorry. I've touched you again. But Darwin Carpet Python, very, very cool snake. So they will change from that orangey colour to this nice fluorescent sort of yellow and white. Yeah, there we go. If you do want to see more videos like this with reptile stuff, comment down below because every time I post a reptile video, it doesn't get many views it seems. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I should just ignore the views. <laughs> Easier said than done. There we are. We have baby snakes. Going to organise those. It's taken a couple hours to get that sorted. A couple more hours to go and then we will get them all feeding. So if you want any baby snakes, just message me on social media and I shall tend to him. Okay, so I'm outside in one of my snake enclosures. Yes, I do keep the bigger snakes outside. And there was a stupidly huge spider just above my head. So not only do I have to avoid the big spider, I have to try and figure out where the snake is. And we can kind of see it there. There's a bug on me already. So hopefully Mr. Spider won't drop down. But that there is an Australian scrub python. So I'm not going to disturb her because she is a cranky bugger and she's pretty huge. But maybe I can stick the phone right over there and you can have a little look and then we'll get out of here before the spider gets me. So there she is. That's all the scrub python you're going to see, unfortunately. But hey, well, see you in the next video.